Thanks, Ilse. We appreciate it. So I am coming to you today from um, Ohio instead of Texas. But today I'm going to be doing some art journaling with you on some alcohol with some alcohol inks. And um, this down here, uh, this particular kit that I'm showing you is um, a really good beginner kit. So if you've never done anything with alcohol inks before, I think you're really going to like that kit to get you started. Um, we are going to be doing all different kinds of things when it comes to just putting some feelings onto some paper, throwing some alcohol ink around, making some different designs, seeing where it takes us, and kind of just enjoying some calm time together where we have a little bit of uh, fun with some different colors and just put whatever we feel or whatever we want to onto the paper. So let's go ahead and switch over to my other camera and I'll show you some of the materials. So as I said, um, we can go ahead and use this kit. This kit is awesome. It comes with alcohol inks. It comes with some of the blending solution, which is like a type of alcohol. If you don't have the blending solution, you can use about a 90% um, percent isopropyl alcohol. It'll do the same kind of trick. Um, there's also what's in this kit is really nice is this um, metallic. So this metallic mixative is actually gonna give you a little bit of a different um, feeling as well. I lost. I'm sorry. I'll say <laughs> you can find my hands again. There we go. Thank you. And then um, this is a really nice metallic mix mixative that's going to give this um, cool feel to it that's going to be different from the alcohol inks and it's going to move a little bit differently too. And then also in the same kit, I mean, this kit really does have it all. Um, it has some uh, stamps and it also has some ink to use with those stamps too. And so I think that this is just a great place for you to begin. It's got all the alcohol inks, it's got the mixer, it's got the stamps, and it even has some of the non-porous paper, which is called Yupo paper. So the paper that comes in this pack, um, it's kind of like card size. And so it's a non-porous surface. If I poured alcohol inks onto just printer paper, it would absorb into the paper and it wouldn't really flow or go anywhere or do anything. But with this Yupo paper, it's non-porous, which means it's slick and the alcohol is not going to get absorbed into it. It's going to dry on top of it. So with it drying on top of it, then we are able to play around with the colors and let all the ink move around on the paper. And so we come up with something beautiful that we're excited about. So I'm going to get started. I would love to know in the chat if any of you are playing along with me or if you're just watching today. If you are watching today, we'll have this um, video up on our Michaels YouTube page tomorrow. And you're welcome to go ahead and check that out. And then you can do a replay and you can watch it and play along with me. But I do recommend going ahead and getting that kit because I think it's going to be great. Yay, someone's playing along. And then if you don't get a kit or if you already have some alcohol inks, then you can just get yourself some of this Yupo paper. You can get other colors of alcohol inks besides the ones that I'm gonna be using. You can use any of the stamps that you have in your collection. So you can really expand what we're doing today. And one more element I didn't mention yet was that I love to use jelly roll pens on top of my alcohol inks and just add some extra touches with my jelly roll pens to kind of make it that journaling kind of feel. So we'll give ourselves a backdrop and then we'll just kind of check in with our picture and see what we're feeling and add some sentiments, add some little designs, add some things that kind of just put whatever it is that we're feeling or thinking into some words and onto this beautiful design. So let's go ahead and get started. The first way I'm gonna show you how to play with alcohol inks is just gonna to be to kind of move around the paper. Now I do have some aluminum foil and I do have some paper towels because I definitely don't wanna mess up my sister's table. She's not gonna like that. <laughs> and so I definitely have my surface protected. You can take the blending solution and you can start by putting some of the blending solution, which is like an alcohol base onto the surface and kind of adding drops of color to that or you can put the drops of color first and add the blending solution. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna take this little bottle of the blending solution and I'm just gonna put a couple of dots and squirts around here on this particular Yupo paper. Now, some of the paper has two sides. You always wanna use the glossiest side because that's gonna be the side that doesn't let the ink settle down. And then I put a couple of 
pieces, I've kind of tilted the paper around to be able to get some more of these puddles. And then I'm gonna take my blue alcohol ink or like this teal color that comes in my kit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up. If you're worried about um, dyes getting on your fingers, you should definitely wear gloves because they will dye your fingers. And so I'm just kind of putting a couple of drops on to the paper, and then I can move them around a little bit by tilting my paper in different directions. You can also start um, using a straw. They have a little blower that's like a, you pinch it and it blows out air. So if you don't feel like using a straw or using your own breath to kind of spread it around, there are some tools that you can use to do as well. If you want more spreading to happen, then you're just going to keep adding more of your blending solution. So when I add more of this blending solution, you'll see the, the alcohol kind of playing with the ink and making kind of like ripples. And so you can move those ripples out. If you start to get some drips like I'm kind of having here, you can move those around as well. And I'm going to kind of blow on it. And you can see some of that blow pattern that kind of gave me some cool organic shapes. You can also add some more colors to this. So I'm using a pretty simple palette of just like red, yellow, and blue. Um, you probably don't want to use more than three colors because at that point, I think you're just going to start getting pretty brown and pretty muddled because these inks will kind of blend together. And so I'm not thinking about what my final project is going to be. I'm just playing around with the ink and putting ink on the paper. And then whatever kind of comes to mind or whatever kind of happens throughout this process, we roll with it. And what's really nice with alcohol inks is that they dry very quickly. So I can tell that these are still wet, but for the most part, these are very dry. So we are gonna put down some color and then we'll put them to the side and we'll come back with our jelly pens and we'll go ahead and add some different things to them. I think I'm going to take just a little bit more stuff to add to this. Not a lot because I kind of like the simplicity of it, but I just put a couple of dots in each one of these corners. And then I'm going to go ahead and add just maybe one or two drops of red into each of those corners and kind of see how that red shows up on this paper too. So I like what's going on here. I can tilt it around. You can see that top kind of spready. And that's one of my favorite parts about alcohol inks is that if you, if this is a craft that you want to control, you are not in control of this craft. <laughs> this craft is in control of itself. So it's going to tell you what you should do. So you can just relax and go along with the ride and just enjoy it. So I like what's going on here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side. And then I'm going to take another piece of youthful paper and I'm going to show you another technique. So with this next technique, I'm going to use what comes in the kit. It looks like a little um, stamper that has Velcro on the top, and then it has these little felt rectangles. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to create kind of like a stamp pattern, and we're going to go around and do some stamps. I think I have an example I can show you. Here's a good one. So the background for this particular art journal piece was the stamp and just stamping that pattern over and over and over again to kind of fill up the space with like a different sort of background. So that's what we're gonna try on the next one, especially if you've never played with alcohol inks, this is just fun for you to kind of play around with all your new tools and see how they all work. So here's the Velcro and I'm attaching this square to the Velcro. And then all I need to do is take some of my alcohol inks and put whatever kind of design, it can be dots, it can be lines, it can be blobs, whatever you want to on this felt. You can add as many or as few colors as you'd like to. If you kind of want your whole entire background to be one color, then just go ahead and stick with one color and you can fill up this felt or you can go ahead and spread it out. I love blues and yellows, so I kind of naturally gravitate towards them. And then once you have these, you can use them as is, or you can add a little bit of, a, of the blending solution to them as well, just to kind of give them some more oomph and spread them a bit. And then I already have one piece here. You can use it as a stamp. 
So I have that really cool design that just happened from all those dots on my felt. And you can use that same design and kind of fill the space. And I really like the way that this is just naturally kind of, there's no real purpose. Um, it doesn't have to be precise. I can go over top of different parts. It doesn't have to be the same repeating pattern. I can switch it up. I can rotate it. I can do different things with it too. And all of those are still going to give me a really cool background to, to play with. So I love this idea too of just kind of filling the space with some um, different stamps using this, um, this technique with the stamper as well. So if you don't have the same kit as me, I bet you could easily make something like this up just by attaching a little felt piece to something else that's thicker that you can keep picking up and down and using into a stamp. And just to show you what else this can do, I can use the exact same pattern and the exact same stamp and I can kind of take it and drag it too and have some fun streaks. <laughs> I saw a jaw drop. A absolutely, yes, jaw drop is appropriate because isn't that cool? So you can just kind of keep going and drag those streaks in order to make a very different design, a very different background from exactly the same set of ink. So I really like both of those. And then I have this first one off to the side drying as well. So we can play with these. I also saw someone doing some kind of like makeshift plaid by then going kind of in the opposite direction. So if you take the lines going one way, and I didn't even make lines on my stamp, I just made dots. But the way that I'm dragging it by doing it this way too, then I can go ahead and make a plaid design, which I think is a fun background. So I'm doing this with the purpose of art journaling. And so in that case, I'm doing it to try and like add some words, add some thoughts, add some feelings to what I'm doing and just kind of have a good experience. I know the squiggles. Ooh, yes. I bet that would be a great idea. So I'm just kind of doing this for fun and doing this for kind of inspiration and good feelings and calm and all those sorts of things that we always need. But if you are trying to make these then into like greeting cards or something else, like if you want to take this craft to another level, you can always make some sort of pattern and then literally cut it out with scissors. So maybe cut out a heart shape or um, get one of those punchers that's a whole a circle to make a perfect circle. And then you can put it onto a greeting card and like attach it with glue and different things like that. I do these a lot for Christmas cards where maybe I play with lots of greens. And then I take a Christmas uh, tree cookie cutter and I trace the cookie cutter and then I cut out that shape and put it onto a white card. So like a real cool alcohol ink background can turn into a really nice Christmas card as well. So now that we have a couple of different backgrounds to play with, I'm going to go to the next step of kind of figuring out what to do um, with this piece and how to turn it into kind of like a journaling experience. So I like in this one that I was able to leave a lot of different white space and maybe in the white space, I would want to take a marker or a pen and write in some of my feelings or write in some of the different things that I'm enjoying or some of the things I want to think about or talk about. You can also add lots of different dots um, and you can add stamps. So the kit that we have that I'm using today comes with a stamp that says own your own dreams, own your dreams. And so the adventure begins and it has a couple of different butterflies, moths, some things about Paris, just a cute little beginner set. So you can use any of those stamps and then make that kind of your focal point of your piece and kind of go from that. Or if there's just something like sometimes I put down some ink and it's like, wow, that looks like some bright sunshine. So then maybe think of some kind of saying or song lyric or something like that that goes along with it and you can kind of build out. So I use jelly pens for the most part, but I might also sometimes go back and use a Sharpie or use a paint pen or add something else if I really want it to stand out with my colors. So on this one, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try the stamp that says, and so the adventure begins, and I'm gonna try and put it in this bottom corner right here. So with the stamp pad, um, it also comes with a clear acrylic block. And so you peel the stamp off of this paper and you put the stamp onto this acrylic block and you can take your time and line it up nicely. 
And when you have it on your acrylic block where you want it, then we go back with our stamp ink. And this is a distress ink that came with this kit, but any of these kind of permanent inks would do well. Distress inks or any of those permanent inks. I'm making sure that the saying has some ink all the way across it. And it is raised off of the, the block. So even if I have a little bit of ink that kind of smears on that clear part, it's okay. It's not gonna touch my alcohol ink drawing. And then I can line it up. What's nice about the clear stamp is that I can line it up really nicely and see exactly where it's about to go. And so when I put it down, exactly where I want it to go and pick it back up and see. And so the adventure begins. And so I love the way that that's just kind of framed in that bottom corner. And then I'm definitely going to add some things up here to go along with that. If you can't see, if your stamp doesn't work perfectly or you can't see it perfectly, that's okay too. I definitely have had that problem before. And what's nice is the M on this one didn't show up when I stamped it but I bet you probably didn't even notice that until I told you <laughs> because I just went over it again and again with my pen and you really can't tell that much of a difference between the other letters. So now I'm gonna move on to some jelly roll pens. And I think I suggested in the list today, this Moonlight set that has some silvers and some darker colors and some kind of almost white or off-white kind of um, colors too. So, I like to use my Jelly Roll pens and kind of write on a surface to make sure that they're up and running um, because sometimes they need to get started before you're ready to go. And once you have your Jelly Pen up and running, then you can kind of start. I like to play with it as if it's like a coloring book or something where I'm taking the different sections and I'm kind of mimicking some of the curves on that section. So maybe you can see some of those fine lines that I'm writing in there with like a light gray almost giving it like a cloudy white feeling too. So I'm adding in some of the curves that are following some of this blue splotch at the top of my paper. And depending on what your design looks like, you can use the same colors or you can use different. And I'm just kind of like expanding on what I see on my paper. And it reminds me of like when you're younger and you kind of look at the clouds and see what you see. And if you see something that looks like something, you can turn it into that. Or maybe you know that that's a good space that you want to write some kind of verse or some kind of saying or something that's important to you. And just the act of you taking time for your, yourself right now and enjoying the process and not trying to make it perfect, just enjoying the way that it's going and seeing what comes up because anything can happen. The adventure has begun. So... Let's see, what else do I want to add? A lot of times, um, if you also have different color jelly pens, you're welcome to use those as well. What's nice about a gel pen as opposed to any other pen is that the gel pens are usually designed to show up on dark surfaces and your inks are typically going to be pretty dark. So if I use this kind of like pink gel pen, you're gonna see that it shows up pretty nicely. So right now I'm just going around in this yellow space and I'm just adding some dots. And that pen just shows up really nicely on the ink because the gel pens are kind of formulated to show up on dark surfaces. So even on this really dark blue, I could add some lines and some squiggles using this red gel pen. And you can still see those pretty well showing up as opposed to if you just took a different pen, it would probably just kind of seep into the background and you wouldn't really be able to see it. So right now I'm just adding some dots and I try to do them randomly, but my math brain really wants me to put them in a pattern. So I'm fighting that, <laughs> but I'm just adding some different dots to space. And for right now, I'm leaving the white space white. If I choose to, I can fill it up and I can fill it up with words or I can just leave it. I'm feeling this box up here. Um, and sometimes another kind of thing that I like to do with my art journaling in general is to like pick a word, pick a mantra, something like that, that I kind of repeat over and over to myself. So sometimes I like to keep using it over and over again too. So someone's asking, can you use acrylic ink or India ink for the same effect? 
And I believe the answer is yes. And I believe you should still use it on the same kind of paper if you want the ink to move. Now, most of the time when people are using India ink or acrylic ink, when they put the ink down, they want it to, to stay there. But if you want your ink to move and kind of flow the way that ours was, you're probably going to need to add some kind of mixture. Um, I don't know if it will be alcohol or if it will be something different that can kind of move some of those colors around for you. I saw another question that says, does the alcohol ink show up well on dark paper? They do sell the black paper. And yes, the alcohol inks do still show up really nicely on that black paper because the inks don't go into the paper. So they're going kind of on top of the paper, which means that they're still gonna show up nicely. They're not gonna disappear into the black background. All right, I'm gonna go back to this space because this space keeps calling my name. And I'm gonna write something like begin. So I have my sentiment at the bottom that says the adventure begins. And so I'm just going to kind of keep repeating to myself over and over again, like begin, because in order for it to start, you just have to begin. You don't have to know how it's going to go. You don't have to know what it's going to be. You just have to begin. So I'm going to keep writing that word over and over as kind of like a little mantra reminder to just get yourself started and see what happens. And so you'll see my writing, and I just like to repeat those words over and over again to fill the space. And then a lot of times I find myself adding different hearts to places too, especially if something already looks like it's about to add a heart, I kind of might make it into a heart on purpose. So I love to have like a pink or a red gel pen on hand to kind of turn some of those spaces those little blotches into hearts. And I haven't done a lot to this one, but I really like the way that it looks. I'm just going to go back to the letters at the bottom and I'm going to take one of my darker gray kind of pens and I'm going to go over the thing at the bottom just to add a little bit more oomph to it. And you don't have to go over it perfectly because honestly, it sometimes looks better if it's not perfect because it's gonna make it wider or make it easier to read. And you can do it with more than one color if you wanna add a little pop of another color. But I'm just kind of, again, as I'm going over the letters, I'm just thinking about what the message is saying and what that might mean to me in my life right now. And just kind of taking this time and using it as some good reflection while we make something beautiful. So that's what art journaling is kind of all about. And so the adventure begins. And just remember to begin. And you cannot mess up. So try things, experiment, do all sorts of things. Oh, I see Elizabeth's using a hairdryer, which is genius, yes. <laughs> so you can use a hairdryer or you can use a straw. You can do different things to blow the ink around and also to quickly dry it so that you can go ahead and keep working. So I'm going to go back to one of these other kind of background pieces that I've already done. And with this one, um, another good idea, I don't have them with me, but another good idea is you can add stickers too. So if you have any kind of like planner stickers, I love those happy planner stickers. A lot of times they have really cool sayings that have clear backgrounds on the stickers. So you can put them onto something like this that already looks pretty nice. So I think that's a really good idea. You can also go ahead and draw yourself something um, with a Sharpie or with one of the gel pens. So I'm gonna kind of feel this one out and see what I think it should say or what should happen here. I'm not sure yet. You never know. So I feel like I'm gonna take some lines and I'm gonna break this into a couple of different spaces. And I'm just kind of making this up as I go. But again, I don't think you can make a mistake. If it's coming from your heart and it's just coming out, it's meant to be. And then a lot of times I like to do a lot of doodling. And so I might take a whole section and then I just keep doing the same sort of line or the same sort of curve over and over again and maybe fill up that particular section. So sometimes when there are things going on in our lives, you just don't have the words for it. 
So sometimes you just kind of let it out in any way that you can. And then maybe later on, you could go back and put this onto a journal page and write something underneath of like what you were feeling or what you were thinking while you were making it. Another doodle that I do all the time is a lot of circles. So I'll just keep doing a bunch of different circles that are all kind of almost touching each other or barely touching each other. And then I go back in and fill in the spaces in any gaps that there might be. And they can be lots of different sizes. And I'm just taking another one of those sections and kind of filling it in with something calming. So recently I taught a class of art journaling and we used watercolors. So we used a lot of the same techniques, except the backgrounds that we made, we used watercolors, and then we used some of these different doodling techniques over top of that. So that might be a good class for you to go back and watch at some point on YouTube. And I think Ilse will be able to put that into the chat. I think you might have already done it. Thank you. So feel free to watch that and enjoy that art journaling class as well. And then another option for you is junk journaling which is a lot more paper craft heavy, but you can definitely use alcohol inks in it. And so maybe you make something and like I said before, then you glue it onto a journal page and you keep working with it, or you can rip it up and do different things as well too. So right now I'm just filling all that space with circles. And then I'm gonna think about some of the other sections and if there are words or things I wanna say, or if I wanna keep going with designs. And if anyone at home has any questions that you wanna ask me or any suggestions or ideas or things, directions you want me to try and go into, we can try that. This is what we have so far. And I'm gonna keep going. And I'm going to draw some lines in this direction. And sometimes I find that when I start drawing these lines, I sometimes go back and use a pen or something and actually write something in. So if there's something that's going on or some kind of um, poem or some kind of thing either I make up or that I want to copy and write from somewhere else, you can kind of add some words and add some thoughts to it but I do just like kind of messing around. And um, yeah, you definitely can write on this Yupa paper with jelly roll pens and with Sharpies. Um, they are kind of, the jelly roll pens especially, if you put your fingers over them, they will smear a bit. So you do need to be careful and let them dry before you put your hands or mess, mess with them because they can. So yeah, sometimes I like to go back after I've drawn some of these lines and actually add words in. Or what I'm trying to do while I'm doing it is it feels like I'm untangling things in my mind. So sometimes by making these lines not so um, perfect or straight, it's kind of me just taking things that are inside of me and kind of untangling them and putting them down onto the paper. So I'm going back to my circles to fill more space. And I had mentioned before that if you have like stickers or if you have paint pens or other things like that, you can change colors. You don't have to just use the black. I love a good white paint pen to add some different dimension and design. So now this is starting to make a very big space over here with all the dots. And I still like the way that that's going. If you wanna add another stamp, you're welcome to do that. And if you wanna add more colors, you're welcome to do that. If anyone is able to make any um, pictures that they're willing to share, you can tag us at Learn With Michaels and you can share your pictures and we would love to let everybody else see them too if you're interested in sharing. Sometimes it might be personal so you don't wanna share, but if you have something that you're willing to share, we'd love to see it. And then I'm big into like affirmation phrases and things like that too. 
So maybe in this bottom space, I like to write the things like, I am enough, and so are you. So again, I like to do some repetitive phrases. And as I'm writing it, trying to let that sink in and let that become a part of what I'm doing and who I am. And maybe we end with some hearts because I heard Ilse say before, maybe just spill some hearts. Can't go wrong, right? <laughs> so we have a couple of different styles so far that are pretty different that are easy to kind of play around with. So this one I focused mostly on Sharpie after I had that background. And this one I did more of the blotchiness and I had the stamp and had the jelly pens and added some dots and things like that. I am gonna do another one of the alcohol inks and I'm gonna show you another technique. So now I'm going down to my foil paper. And this one's kind of like a mixture of the first one and the second one. Remember that the second one we made our own little stamp and we were able to um, fill the background with that. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna put some alcohol inks on this aluminum foil, and then I'm gonna put a piece of Yupo paper down and drag it across. And so I'm gonna transfer the inks in a different way than I had before. So I still have a couple of the smaller pieces, but I am gonna go ahead and use one of these as well because it's a little bit larger. And so I'm going to use this um, surface and I'm going to be putting down some different drops of color. And this time too, I'm gonna to use the metal mixative and I'm gonna show you what that kind of looks like as well. And I will put some blending solution. So it's kind of like I'm making an alcohol ink on my aluminum foil before I kind of dip my paper into it and see what happens. So you're welcome to kind of play around with this. When you have one of the metal mixatives, um, you need to shake it and there's a ball in the bottom of it. So you don't stop shaking it till you hear that sound with the ball because it needs to agitate what's in there. And then this is gonna have a different texture than the alcohol inks because it has a little bit of that metallic feel to it. So I dropped that in a couple of different places too. Now I can play with this, I can blow this around, I can move this around, but I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna put the paper face down, shiniest side down towards this and kind of take up an imprint of whatever's going on on my foil. I'm gonna move my fingers around, maybe spread some of that ink and kind of squish it out to fill more of that space. And then I'm gonna peel it up, ooh, and see a whole new kind of feel. So this one has that gold metal in it, which is kind of cool too. And this one to me right now is kind of feeling a little like darker, like something that I'm working out, right? Like get it, keep going through, don't give up. Like that kind of feel is how I'm feeling. So it always depends on the colors. It always depends on lots of different things of what it's gonna end up looking like. Another thing you can do is if you have a paper towel or if you have a napkin, Sometimes it's fun to play with texture by taking the paper towel and kind of blotting. So when you blot, you'll see that I'm taking up some of the ink with my paper towel and making a very different texture again. And now I'm feeling like this is turning into like a phoenix rising kind of situation. So I think this is like a rebirth kind of like, yes, please. So I'm gonna take this away so that I don't keep getting it messy all over my paper. But that's just one more way you can kind of play with your alcohol inks is to do it on a smooth surface and then kind of pull it up that way. And remember, I also use some paper towel. Another good thing about the paper towel besides the cool texture that it's leaving is that it's also helping this dry sooner so that if I wanna write over top of it, I'll be able to write over top of it pretty well pretty quickly because it doesn't take very long at all to dry. So I'm curious if those of you at home are, um, that were saying that you're playing along, how you're doing. And if you have any questions or anything you want to ask about or share, what kind of phrases are you putting on your page? What things are speaking to you today? I'd love to hear about that.
and then I'm going to get ready to write on this one. Let me cut out a circle from these. Yes, I love that idea. Absolutely, 1000%. So I, I even see Candy's talking about putting it onto a pendant. Yeah. So if you find a part of your design that you really love, go ahead and cut it out and you can use it in different things. So she's suggesting a pendant. If you take it and you put it into a little um, pendant backing, you can put some UV resin over top of it. And then you can cure that UV resin to protect it so that nothing happens to your, to your drawing. So that's a great use of this alcohol ink. Like I said before too, I don't think I have any scissors next to me, but like I can cut these out and do different things. I've also been known to kind of tear them or rip them and then kind of build off of there too. So yeah, all of the, these techniques would also work with something called paint pouring, if you've ever done paint pouring. So if you don't have your alcohol inks, you can use watercolor, you can use paint pour, you can use anything. But the point I think for me today is to have something fluid, something that you can't really control and something that's just gonna do what it's gonna do. And then you kind of build from there because that feels like a metaphor for life, right? Things are out of your control, but you're gonna build it into something beautiful. So I'm using one of my gel pens again, and I'm not thinking of words. Maybe I am thinking of words. So I'm gonna put the, I will rise as a reminder. So I'm putting that into the corner with my gel pen. I can find some other spaces to either continue that same phrase or that same thought. I can do hard things, that feels right. And if you can't see these very well, I can see them pretty well from where I'm sitting, but I know that they're shiny, so it might be hard to see on your screen. Um, but you can always take a paint pen and give yourself a space and then write, or you can take a piece of paper and you can use some glue. So maybe you actually take a piece of paper that you write something on and then tape it down onto your paper. You're welcome to do that too. Maybe have a little strip that goes all the way across and says something important to you too. So what else? I'll rise, I can do hard things. I'm gonna put trust. And then I'm gonna go back and do some more of my decoration. So I'm gonna take one of my kind of gray pens and I'm just gonna add a little bit of texture with some dots. I might even add, take this blue pen and write in some of the red spots with some dots. If you start to see things on this paper that look like maybe wings or fire or something like that, you can kind of outline them and make them more into what you want them to be. So you'll see that I just took that blue and kind of outlined almost like a wing or something to kind of point me in that general direction. Again, if you see some hearts, you can go ahead and add those hearts in. If you think of other words to add, you can always do that. But I really do like making a lot of these dots. It's again, just a really calming thing to do and a good way to add some more to your texture of your overall drawing. I'm gonna take my red pen over here and I'm gonna kind of follow some of these lines. It almost feels kind of like volcanic down here of like the things coming up, but then maybe clearing back out. So wherever you go, is correct and is right. So you cannot do this wrong. This is just for you. You don't have to show it to anyone else. And this could be just the right thing to kind of capture this moment. You can glue it into a journal. You can put it in the back of a Bible or a book that's important to you or something like that. Maybe make a bookmark to remind yourself or someone else. If somebody else in your life is going through something you can um, give it to them as a reminder, some encouragement. I'm gonna add a couple more dots. These are pretty light. So the light ones would probably be better in some of these darker spaces down here. 
but just adding a little bit more to it. And following some lines that are already there and enjoying that. And then I think I'd like to do one more if that's okay with you guys. I'm going to do one more background and kind of set one more up for us. And then if you have any questions or comments or anything, please feel free to keep adding them to the chat and I'll pay attention to that. So I'm just going to do one more and I'm going to do this one where I'm going, <laughs> yay. I'm going to do one more where I um, start with the uh, with the blending solution. And I'm giving myself some, I might even move it around with my finger just to start putting some down on the surface. And then I'm going to take some of my inks and start adding some color. And you have more than you think you do in these tiny little bottles. So don't be afraid to, you don't have to do one drop at a time. You can do as many drops as you want. This one is... I mean, right now it's giving me blood, but that's because it's red and drippy. It might <laughs> turn into something else. We don't know. Or maybe this is what I meant to draw right now too. I don't know why. So Halloween, that's right, it's coming up. So let's see where it goes. I don't know where it's gonna go. I'm moving it around and I'm gonna add some more alcohol blending solution. So I love, this is one of my favorite things, just to just, put a drop and watch the ripples. It's like looking at a lake, just letting it spread out, just breathing with it. I love that. I think that that's so relaxing and so calming. So I'm gonna do some more of those because just let them grow and bloom and do different things. Starting to change the look of it and I like where it's going. I can also blow on it. And kind of move some of that around in a different way. I think I'm going to take my metal and I'm going to add some of the metal texture. And you can add the blending solution to the metallic mixative too. It does some weirder things. It like bubbles almost. Can you see that? Ooh. I'm going to kind of move it around. It's pretty fluid. Might let it drip all the way off the side. Really let that spread and do its thing. And it's already kind of changed what I thought this was going to be by adding that one extra color up there. And letting it kind of spread and take over. Again, I like to think that I can direct where these are going to go, but you can't. <laughs> and so I just have to let go of control and let it do whatever it wants to do. Good lesson for me. I'm going to put a little bit more blending solution over here. So you'll notice that my blending solution or adding some alcohol kind of lightens that. And if you want to keep lightening that and you don't want those thick kind of like rims of color, you can always kind of take those away with the tissue and kind of let it blend more naturally into the paper. So if you get some of those darker rings and you don't like the way that that looks, you can spread them out. You can use a paintbrush. I'm just using a paper towel. But again, I kind of like this feathery look that I'm spreading that extra clumps, those extra clumps of color around in a different way. So it's very different on this side than it is on this side. And I am going to add a little bit more of my gold. So remember with the gold mixative that you want to shake it so you hear that fall. Let's see what happens over here with a little bit of that. And I'll add a little bit of blending to those. I love the way that it kind of fizzles and moves. I'm gonna let it kind of drip all the way off to the side. Hmm. 
I like it. I kind of feel the need to add another color and I don't know if I should or not, but I think I'm gonna. So I did some dots of the blue and I will go back with some blending solution. Let those kind of move around a little bit. And if there's a portion that you end up feeling like you like, if I just like this side better than this side, I can cut off this side. I can use it for something else and I can just focus on this side if I like that better too. But I'm gonna keep working over here because I don't quite have it where I want it to be yet. I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's not quite there yet. Just kind of watching that spread and seeing what's happening. And then if anybody has any recommendations for what you think some of the phrases should be on this one, I'd love to see your ideas if it's speaking to you in any way. I can use my paper towel again if I wanna pull up some different color. What's also cool about the paper towel is that if you pull up some of one of the darker colors like the blue, then you can use it on your paper towel and put it over top of something else. So I can kind of make this gold stand out a little bit less by putting some of that blue over top of it. So that's another little trick. Picking up some of the darker colors and spreading them if you feel like it's too heavy on one side compared to the other. So. I'm gonna go through and show you one more time some of the different things that I've done today. And I would love to see if anybody else has made any or if you get a chance to later on, please share those color com combinations. I think these three alcohol inks, the blue, yellow, and red, just give you a really good starting point. Um, so I do highly recommend this kit if you haven't already get, gotten it, just because it's such a great place to start. If you buy all these components separately, it's gonna be a lot more expensive than just starting here and then adding to your collection. So now I'm gonna go through and show you a couple of my collection of art journaling pieces from both today and maybe a day or two ago when I was working on these. So we have this one we just made together and I'll let that dry and I'll add some words. And then I have this one with the background um, that we did with the stamp. And this one had the own your own dream stamp. I had. I took just one or two of those butterflies from the stamp. So what I did with that one was I didn't put ink on all three of them. I only put ink on maybe one of them and kind of placed them so that only one of them shows up. This was the one I made during class that was very like um, Phoenix rising, rising again, doing hard things, believing in yourself kind of thing. We started off with this one, the adventure beginning. And I use the repetitive words and use some of the dots and outline some of the colors. And I always forget because you can tell that I love color and I love filling space with color. I always forget to leave blank space, but I love how it turns out when you do leave some of that blank space. So don't be afraid to leave some of that white space. This was more of like a Sharpie and just kind of doodles and things like that with that background. Here's one I've done earlier where it kind of reminded me of a sun. So I just went with that and added some doodles around it with the jelly pens. I haven't added any phrases to this one yet. So I'll have to think of a phrase to add to the one we stamped together. And then the other day I was making these and was just kind of feeling like, you know, love is just so strong and it's everywhere. You just have to tap into it. So just kind of one of those, like we're all interconnected kind of feelings. That's what I felt going on inside of this picture. And I really like this one too. It kind of reminded me of some transformation. I loved how this gold was kind of dripping down here. And so I took advantage of that and put these moths and butterflies into that gold space. And then I put some open circles on this one too. Instead of all the dots, I made some open circles and I put some dots up here. 
just to kind of add some more to that. So those are what I've been able to come up with and I can't wait to see what you are able to come up with. And I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. I usually teach classes on Thursdays and Fridays and we have lots of different kinds of crafts that we do together. So feel free to come by again sometime and we've enjoyed our time with you. And I hope you've enjoyed this as well. So we'll see you again real soon. Bye.